basically I had <laughs> what became the rainbow machine sitting on a breadboard for almost a year and every once in a while I would pull it out like when people would come over and visit and like I think that like everybody down here was like that's cool but it was really annoying. What do I do with this? This thing's crazy. I don't even care what it sounds like. I like the name. The rainbow machine is a um is a <laughs> it was controversial even within the shop. Fedge hated it. He hated it. I only heard like this like pixie scenting where it's like boo <laughs> you know. Sounds really cool. I don't know what you would use it for. <laughs> Like one of the most consistent <laughs> pedals. Um, this one's real filthy, so that's probably older. <laughs> I think the Fedge has the prototype right here. Why you zoom in on it if you want? Yeah, get a good zoom. Get good. Yeah. Uh -huh. This was. Uh, I guess it's Rainbow Steen 001. I think I designed the Rainbow Machine in 2010, sitting right here, when we used to work in the basement, so my desk was here. Uh, and how it came about was there was like this new processor that just came out, the FV1, and it kind of made it easy for DIY people like me to do digital effects. So I was kind of just seeing what all it could do, which eventually evolved into the rainbow machine, but I think I just kept working at it and adding things. And I think the way that the whole magic thing started is I was just trying to do a feedback loop, running the input to the output to see what would happen. And it was like a super uncontrollable version of that, but it sort of sparked an idea. And then I kind of kept working it and working it. Um, and at that time, I think it was just me and uh, Jeff Rance, our production manager working. Uh, it almost sounds like a little well, bit like a phaser at times. It's gonna be the bass track. really gonna open it up. Let's hope that uh, that I can get it in one or two tries. This one right here is we used to have a company eventually we weren't able to screen our stuff anymore so we were having this company they would drill and powder coat everything and deliver it to us um, and they had moved from screen printing to printers which now at work we use the same printers um, and they wanted to show us what they could do like full color which, I mean, you notice all of our stuff's like a solid color, it's two color stuff. And we haven't really drifted from that. I think it's an aesthetic choice. We have the opportunity to do full color. And they sent us this. I think it's pretty cool. Jamie did not like it. So, you know, they sent it and they're like, look what we can do. And he's like, ugh. The Rainbow Machine was named after a drawing my daughter Sylvia brought home from school. And uh, I remember I was standing in the kitchen, I think making coffee, and she was like, Dad, here, and hand me this thing, and I was just staring at it. It was like this sideways thing, and it kind of looked like a gazebo made out of rainbows, and it had all this like smoke, I think, coming off of it, and like people holding on to it, and I was like, what is that? And she's like, it's a rainbow machine, and it was like, it blew my mind. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't find that drawing right now, but it's sat on our refrigerator forever. I seem to remember it being more of like, you know, what are those things you would use to explode, like TNT? Do you know what I mean? But instead of it exploding something, a rainbow coming out of it. You look through all this stuff here? Yeah. I was asked to recreate the original rainbow machine drawing. I came up with this which apparently is wrong, went upstairs to ask the boss. He said, no, 
actually it's more like a flying rainbow archway. Uh, then I went upstairs, he said, no, that's not really it either. So he drew this really horrible sketch that is this. This is what I had to go off of. He said it was more like a lot of really small lines of different colors and it was like shooting off of another rainbow and there was a person inside of there. So then I came up with these sketches. Here's one of just Stillman being sad because he can't make up his mind on what things look like. It looks like 2011 is when he came up with this. And then here's this email. It's like, uh, I saw the, I write to him, I go, I saw the rainbow machine on your site. Man, that sounds right up my alley. Does it take the signal and incorporate it into sounds or does it instrument, or does the instrument just trigger the pedal? So then he answers me and just tells me, you know, self oscillating, you know, he feeds it back into the pedal. And I'm just like, all right, none of that shit makes sense. But I always, when I explained it, and I've done so many clinics for Earthquaker, and I'm always kind of weary of saying it to people, but I'd say it anyway. I always go like, when you hit the trails on it, on the Activate, it's like acid. Like if you've never done acid, mushrooms. If you've never done mushrooms, like if you ever got knocked out, right? As you're still like awake and you're about to go under, it's that sound. So that's kind of how I've always described it. <laughs> Is this, what's that sound? Do you, do you hear that sound? Where is it coming from? Wow, is that rainbow machine? That's the rainbow machine. I remember, you know, it almost immediately started catching a lot of attention, but it was kind of divisive too. You know, some people would say, um, you know, this is so weird, nobody is ever going to want this. And then other people would, you know, be saying, I can't keep this in stock, you know? So it was definitely a controversial pedal, <laughs> but it really helped, I think, you know, bring our name in front of a lot of people. I remember the very first time plugging in the rainbow machine and uh, basically thought I had taken a hallucinogen and had forgotten about it. Um, you know, it kind of reminded me of uh, some of the effects that were available in the 70s and immediately I was attracted to the way that you can bend time with it. Uh, I think that's a very unique aspect about it, especially with sequences, you know, like synthesizers and stuff like that. Yeah, it blew my mind the first, first time ever really getting to use it. One of the things that I like to do with it is, you know, is I like to have the magic on a lot. And um, basically, you know, the key to getting a lot of different rhythmic values is right here in the center dial and it kind of allows you to either tighten up how much you want there to be laser beams coming off of the rhythms or not. And that combined with your, your sort of um, tracking delay time, you know, you can really make it sort of be a contrapuntal part of the rhythm or be right with it or just totally take it into, you know, the cosmos, you know, which is kind of the whole idea. Well, the thing is, you know, after kind of playing with the pedal, I know it's easy to get out of control with this thing. Um, I was in a session for Gone is Gone, and I was like, I need something to kind of, you know, like break up my signal because I was doing a like a like a stereo mix, you know, left to right guitar. So I just put this on the left guitar, uh, and I was like, it really just added this depth. And it's a loud pedal too, so 
kind of boosts every time you use it. So I just, I just, I just used it like straight up the middle, like no pitch shift at all, and turned all the, all the, uh, all the, all the pitch. I guess it's the primary, the secondary pitch, all the way up. The tracking all the way up, so it's very tight. The tone all the way up, and I don't even really use use the magic side. But the problem is, once you step on the pedal, like I, I even though my shoes don't suggest, you know, it seems like I have a strategic reason for wearing these shoes. I kept hitting the pitch, uh, pitch knob. So I was like, I just want to set it and forget it. Perfect chicken every time. So. That's why I started taping it up because it's like, that's the one setting, I'm not gonna fuck with it. And so it just stays on my board like that. So I ended up using it on my guitar board and on my lap steel board for Queens um, because it just does that thing that nothing else kind of does. And now, for the Rainbow Machine. This is our digital future, present, past pitch shifter with delay. You can go from a third above all the way down to a fourth below. But wait, there is more. There is the magic control that controls regenerations and takes you on a journey far, far away, surfing across rainbows and fields. And we promise it will be okay. First time I saw the rainbow machine was um, this uh, this box of pedals showed up at my studio. Uh, and uh, I, I was like, okay, cool. Uh, so what all we got in here? So I started looking through them, and um, my assistant was like, I was like, look, there's all these pedals. They're, these are amazing. Let's play some guitar through them, and then write on the side of the box what's awesome about them, right? Like, like, is this a modulation pedal? Is this a distortion? Is this a fuzz? And so my assistant just wrote on the side of the pedal, magic all he wrote on the side of it. So uh, I had all these boxes on, on my shelf, I had this big shelf, and I ran in there one day and I was looking for something, I was just like, oh, fuck, magic. So I just pulled it down, and we hooked it up, and in fact, it really was magic. It was really awesome. My buddies, Jonathan Hishke and Troy Van Leeuwen turned me onto it. And uh, yeah, it's just been, it's still, I just had a pedal board built for my drum machines and the rainbow machine's in there and I literally just use it this week. And uh, it's, it's awesome. That thing to me is like a surprise box, like the tracking and the magic button. I just, uh, I run it obviously in sequence with other things and, uh, and uh, yeah, the chorus, but, but more just the magic button and, and the level of the tracking and stuff just always, uh, just gives me something that I wasn't expecting, basically. So I found the rainbow machine at Old Style Guitars and had no idea what it did. Plugged it in and I saw opportunity <laughs> to exploit and weirdness and also be musical. But yeah, create textures and vibes. I mean, it was just right there. So the first time I encountered the Rainbow Machine was actually through I believe an Instagram video. I was just scrolling and I think it was a video of someone at Earthquaker just demoing it and it sounded really like crazy. It sounded like like a rainbow or like sparkles kind of. Um, and then I saw Josh Martin do a video of it. And he utilized it in a really like practical cool way, which usually people just use it for like crazy noise, but he was able to actually accomplish something melodic with it, um, which I thought was amazing, and I was really interested in it.
right now I've got the rainbow machine on. Um, I got that pedal when we recorded our last record and I used it for one of its like wacky things, you know, and it kind of was, it sounded almost like a car. It was just kind of self oscillating and kind of this big swell thing. And so I didn't really, I didn't realize how usable it was until um, our drummer Zach has a band called Half Noise that I've played with a couple times and I've kind of found this really cool like slap back like modulated slap back. Um, it's like pretty subtle, you know, but it just kind of adds some width and dimensions. I use that like all over the place. There's like this magic knob on it. I'm not really sure what it was doing exactly, but the magic knob, when I turn it, I found that I could actually get it to like oscillate and then it like speeds up a lot and produces this crazy feedback that goes like really perfectly into the a really quiet section. So I use it as kind of like just a way to generate crazy noise. I, it's, it kind of does something different every time too. So live, it's really fun because I don't know what kind of noise I'm going to get. And then it goes into like a quiet section as contrast. So. I really got to know the Rainbow Machine while I was touring in 2016. I had it on my board for that whole tour. Um, I used it a lot to recreate sounds off of um, my album, Fantastic Planet. Um, and throughout the process of touring, um, I was inspired to write a new piece, which became kind of like the, um, the, the foundation track for my next album, Pink Sunset for No One. So I use it on the opening track, Deep Shelter. We worked on Twerpverse with Mike Mogus. He mixed and, and he mixed the record and did some additional production. Um, and I had recorded the synths at home, often through the Rainbow Machine. He was like, oh, I love the Rainbow Machine. I use it on drums all the time. And he played me a part of the, um, I want to say the new Cursive record, where he had Rainbow Machine drums. He played another part of it that was Rainbow Machine vocals. And it was just cool to see that you know, I had been using it for guitar and synth. He'd been using it for drum and vocals. Um, I later played this like concert series where a woman was running her bass through it. it sounded insane. I think for the more psychedelic shit, like you, you have to get in a band that's like fucking crazy. Like Mars Volta is a crazy band, psychedelic and weird. And so, of course, I could use something like this. I mean, you take this into certain applications, I imagine like Dwight Yoakam might not want that or maybe he would, I don't know. Like, depends if he's ever done acid, but I just think that it's, it's, it's not for every situation, but I think for the more outside shit, like, yeah, this is essential to your pedal board. <laughs> Pretty much every time somebody made a video of the Rainbow Machine, they used it in a way where I was like, oh wow, that's really cool. <laughs> like, I forever would only make that like, you know, magic up, tracking down, kind of pitch all the way up, magic wand sound. Like, that was my thing and then I would manipulate it. 2014, 2000, maybe 13? I don't know. Around 2014, you're hearing this sound a lot coming from pedal boards. <laughs> which is like a really cool thing, but then it, that sound is just so identifiable and obvious that it like, to me in my brain, it starts getting kind of like played out really quickly. So I'm like, eh, what, what else does this pedal do besides that? So then you kind of start messing with the pitch knob on it because the pitch is kind of like the master control of this pedal about, you know, based on that controls what it's gonna do. So when you dial back the pitch, At right about 12 o'clock, you get a really, really lush chorus sound. And so as soon as I got onto that, I'm like, oh, that is my favorite thing out of this pedal. So you get this sort of thing. I think I eventually saw it in a video, probably like three or four years after the pedal came out, somebody was using it as a chorus with just the pitch slightly off. 
and then you could kind of set the magic to rise very slowly and controlled and you got to set the tracking just right but it makes an amazing chorus and then you can hit the magic and it will take off and then you turn it off it'll come back down but that kind of changed my opinion even <laughs> on the pedal and i think that's a lot of people's favorite settings at least around our shop but that's how i use it all the time now my name is corey heron uh, and i play bass in the band relaxer and at Earthquaker Devices, I work in our quality control department. And right now we are at our studio space where we do uh, band practice. So my main use of the Rainbow Machine is usually as a chorus, so when you have the pitch knob set to dead center. What's cool about uh, the Rainbow Machine's chorus is you can have like a detuned kind of thing or an uptuned kind of thing. And while you're playing, you can just have. So just, you can take that note, ramp it up or down or just let the Rainbow Machine do its own thing. that oscillation to kind of bring in a new section. It's not one trick pony. It's the exact opposite of one trick pony, which I think is kind of cool. But initially, people don't see that. It sounds so cool. Like, so it gets up at the top, and it like it just starts like fizzing and aliasing and all kinds of cool stuff. But it's like, what is he going to use it for? But it turns out there's so many uses you don't even know. So like, really in drums, like you get that cool. Uh, I like it when it's a little faster. Yeah, it's really cool, like sort of dive bombs. It's just such a distinct sound, but it's cool that it has so many applications, and I'm always excited when I see it on someone else's board. It's like a little secret handshake that we love the rainbow. When I had the rainbow machine on my pedal board for the first couple years, I had a lot, I was answering that question quite a bit. So what is the rainbow machine? What does it do? And I'm like, well, hmm, or like in interviews or whatever, that's a really hard question to answer because I don't even know, like I, I wonder what the description is on the Earthquaker website besides pitch shifting delay because there's so many different things it does, right? It's like, it does self oscillation, it does, uh, like I said, a really, really nice, regular, just kind of like delay sound. It does chorusing. It does wacky, like out of this world kind of thing. So I don't really know how to answer that. And the, it's, I feel like it's really rare that you come across pedal where it's like, I don't know how to describe what it does. Just plug it in and play it and find out for yourself. You know, when you when you get your 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 bell rung, that's kind of what this does. You know, like if you hit your head and you're like, ding. There's a little bit of like a tight echo in there. I'm not sure everybody experiences that, but that's just me. So you got to be able to express what's in your head. And that's what that pedal does for me. People just hear that sound and think that's all it does. But there's a lot of stuff to be found inside that pedal. And I would start at the chorus setting and kind of branch out from there. And you'd be surprised at how normal and tame and like really great sounding of a pedal can be and then you can just hit a single switch and make it go insane.
and it's all sort of DIY guesswork together. <laughs>